so excited to be here from ESMO uh, in the poster hall. Um, but yeah, you know, it's been decades, right? And, you know, cisplatin has been king. No one has been able to beat uh, platinum-based therapy in a randomized trial in the frontline setting. And now, you know, at the presidential session, we had two presentations in which a new regimen was able to perform better than, than platinum-based chemotherapy, you know. It's pretty remarkable. It's so remarkable that after the EV32 presentation, there's actually a standing ovation for uh, the data. So, I mean, we'll start with the, um, the data looking at cisgen mutos. So, you know, we've seen data with platinum IO versus platinum, and there really hasn't been any benefit to the addition of IO up front with indiscriminate use of platinum, be it cis or a carbo. But when you start to look at some of the, the subsets, it seems like, you know, those patients who got cisplatin maybe got a benefit to immunotherapy. So given that, that's what the idea for this trial, right? So this is patients who are getting cisplatin and gemcitabine. They're randomized to get cisgem or cisgem with nivolumab, right? So the idea really just focuses on those patients with cisplatin. And, you know, there's a lot of discussion about the study and the all the factors, you know, a, a minority patient wanted to get maintenance of value map who went to cisplatin and gemcitabine arm. But what they showed in that study was that the addition of nivolumab to cisplatin and gemcitabine improved overall survival, improved progression-free survival versus cisplatin and gemcitabine alone. And what I think I found most remarkable about this is that, you know, the PD as best response, that progressive disease as best response was lowered with the addition of nivolumab, which is important. Um, and furthermore, the number of cycles of cisplatin was actually improved with um, additional VOMAB, implying that, you know, we get patients through more systemic therapy because we're preventing early progression. And all that led to a uh, CR rate around 20%. And what's really, really remarkable is that, you know, before the ED PEMBER diver, this had been practicing because that CR rate of 20%, you know, they look at that median duration of CR and it has not yet been reached to range from 37 months plus. Right, so maybe we're curing a of these patients with cisgen mutos. So really, really, sort of, you know, would have been that represents a new standard of care for patients getting cisplatin-based therapy. And then at the same session, we had the EV uh, three or two, and this is a trial. You know, we've seen data for EV Pembro in metastatic frontline situations, um, where the response rates around seventy percent, and those patients are unfit for cisplatin. So actually, EV Pembro is already approved on accelerated approval in the United States for that situation. Um, so this is a trial of EV Pembro versus platinum doublet, right? So uh, about, if you look at it analysis, over half patients are eligible for cisplatin. We don't know how, to, how many received cisplatin. The rest were eligible, were not eligible for cisplatin. So patients got EV302, got EV with Pembro. EV is given 1.25 day, one eight, a 21 day cycle. It's continued indefinitely the Pembro stops at two years, but there's no end date for the EV, or they got platinum doublet. Um, patients were allowed to go on to maintenance of value map per investor discretion, but it wasn't required. And so what we saw here was a marked improvement in overall survival, progression-free survival, response rate, complete response rate across the board. So we'll start response rate. Um, overall trajectory response rate was 70% with EV Pembro with a 30% CR rate. I mean, unheard of. The progress-free survival went from six to 12 months with EV Pembro versus platinum doublet. And the overall survival was around 16 months up to 30, over 31 months with EV Pembro. So really, really remarkable data. The median follow-up right now is only 17 months. Um, so, you know, that end of the curve is a little bit unstable, but really, really exciting data. You know, there was no patient seemed to get more of a benefit from EV Pembro versus platinum. You know, they look at that uh, hazard ratio for cis eligible versus cis ineligible, really a clear benefit across the board. So super, super excited that I think it represents a new standard of care. Um, you know, and it, it's going to make a question, do we even care about cis platinum eligibility anymore, right? I mean, if you have this amazing um, data for EV Pembro independent of cis platinum, I think that it's really exciting. I think, you know, how do we put that kind of cisgem nevo? If we knew, if we could find out who those patients, that 20% who get that CR with cisgem nevo, who they are, I think that would be fantastic, right? Cisgem is a, a finite course. We get that. So I think work will be done for the biomarkers. Unanswered questions remain regarding EV Pembro. Do we need to get the EV forever? Can we stop it? How many patients did stop it? How many cycles did they get? Um, but really, really, really exciting results. Look forward to seeing the, uh, the paper and incorporating this into our practice.
there are a couple of points I wanted to make about uh, the EV Pembro data and the Gemsys Nevo data. Uh, EV Pembro is clearly a big advance. You know, the median survival, 31.5 months uh, across the board, cis eligible or ineligible, I think it's very impressive. The CR rate is impressive, 29%. Uh, and the duration of response seems impressive, although the median has not been reached. Uh, it seems like it's um, going to be more than two years probably. So we'll need to wait for the DOR. But one of the points I wanted to make was with the Gemsys Nevo, the CR rate was uh, also fairly impressive, 22%. And the median duration of CR was mature at 37 point, uh, around 37 months median DOR for the CR. So one of the things I would consider uh, in the clinic is uh, in patients who are likely to have a complete response with cisplatin-based chemo, uh, can can we use Gemsys Nevo instead of EV Pembro uh, just because of the long median duration of CR of 37 months? Now, the Gemsys Nevo has some toxicity benefits. You, you're stopping the Gemsys after a finite period of time, after up to six cycles, and then it's Nevo alone that continues, so that's much more tolerable. Uh, there are huge cost uh, differences between Gemsys Nevo and EV Pembro. Um, so basically, toxicity advantages um, should be also uh, in the discussion, in the mix of the discussion. The other population in which uh, EV Pembro might be something um, to wonder about is a cisplatin ineligible poor PS2 performance status patient or frail patient where EV Pembro with its neuropathy and skin rash could be challenging. And so might want to consider the uh, preserving the javelin paradigm in um, select patients who are too frail for EV Pembro and, and, and cisplatin ineligible. So those are a couple of points I wanted to make. So obviously, it's, uh, we need to do some more work on biomarkers. It would be nice to identify who the CR patients on GEMSYS are. Uh, we know these lymph node patients, uh, only lymph, lymph node alone match patients clearly are in that group. Uh, but is there a biomarker? Uh, one of the biomarkers I'll bring up is um, the ERC2 ERCC2. That's a great biomarker for fat CR with neoadjuvant cisplatin-based chemo. Now, could that be a biomarker in metastatic disease and help us select patients for GEMSYS Nevo? So I think more work needs to be done for to select patients better and also to maybe identify patients who have bad toxicities uh, with these agents, including EV Pembro and even GEMSYS Nevo. But this is like amazing data, right? I mean, we're talking metastatic bladder cancer with median survival of 31 months. We're saying, hey, maybe we're curing a subset of these patients at metastatic disease with this 37 month duration of response. I mean, it's it's really, really remarkable. I think it's a super exciting. You know, obviously the toxicities, EV Pembro is, has its unique toxicities. The skin rashes are something that I think will be important to monitor. The small risk for hypoglycemia, monitor for neuropathy. Um, but I think that this is something that, you know, is really exciting um, development. I think it's gonna, it's really advancing the field of body cancer.